Hollywood films are not short on villains who are defined by their psychopathy and the desire for power and money. Sometimes these attributes can lead to great results, just like at Hans Gruber from Die Hard, but more often than not, they generate very forgettable antagonists. The formula makes sense to a certain degree. Everybody wants more money, and everybody wants more power. So if that's the villain's end goal, there isn't much worth questioning. If the actor gives a charismatic enough performance, the rather mundane motivations can be ignored. This brings me to Collateral, the masterpiece directed by Michael Mann. What Michael Mann does with the help of a fantastic Tom Cruise is they define Vincent, the film's antagonist, not by what he is in pursuit of, which is just another payday, but rather the philosophy which has led him to engage in this pursuit in the manner he does. From the very beginning, we get a clear gauge on who Vincent is and why he's the perfect foil for the film's hero, Max. Max is a cab driver who's indecisive and very much stuck at a crossroads in his life. Max has dreams and he fools himself into believing he's actually going to pursue them. Vincent, on the other hand, is very robotic in how he operates. There is no task he's afraid of facing and no person who intimidates him. He is a highly trained assassin who has been successful in his line of work for a very long time. On top of that skill and decisiveness, Vincent is also extremely charming and likable. Nobody he converses with in the entire film has a bad interaction with him until they recognize his true intentions. The jazz club owner Daniel is the prime example of this. As I mentioned before, most films would not take the time to explain the mindset behind Vincent's lifestyle. They would substitute the dialogue sequences for a set piece because most studios and maybe they're correct in this assumption, believe the audience is not interested in the sort of philosophical discussions we get in Collateral. After Vincent makes his first kill, Max cannot get his mind around the actions of Vincent. How can your sole interaction with somebody end with murder? And Vincent's rationale, which he elaborates on at two other points in the film, is very well rehearsed. You can tell that Vincent has given the speech to other people before, and probably delivers it to himself before every assignment. His rationale is simple, but very hard to refute. If we live in solely a material world, if every action we make is forgotten within 50 years, why shouldn't I kill these people if I benefit? Vincent is a very skilled individual, and like someone who spends 12 years trained to become a doctor, why shouldn't Vincent enter the line of work that pays the most for his services? Max never truly answers Vincent's question. What Max eventually says to him is that his philosophy was formed not out of logic, but formed by his past experiences. And by all available evidence, Max is correct in making this assumption. Vincent was a foster child whose father was a brutal alcoholic. A nihilistic philosophy can be a powerful tool in reducing the pain of trauma and reducing the guilt of evil actions. Under this philosophy, you have two real options. You can be a wolf, or you can be a sheep. Vincent chooses to be a wolf, and he chooses Max to be his cab driver because he believes he's a sheep. And this is a fatal error because nihilism blinds him from the third option, which I'll explain later. The question Collateral is asking us is a very difficult one. Is Vincent's behavior wrong if his presumptions about the world are correct? Here's a quick question to ask yourself. Do you know what your great-grandfather's name is? Do you know what the course of his life was? Do you know the moral things he did or the immoral things he did? I assume that most people wouldn't. In just within a hundred years, the lives of billions will be forgotten. 50 million people were killed by the Spanish flu. How many of those 50 million still have descendants who know their name? Vincent takes this reality to its logical end. If these people I've been sent to kill will be washed away by time, what does it matter if they die today or 30 years from now? Time will make their lives meaningless anyways. Here's another way to think about it. When we watch BBC America and we see wolves devour an elk calf, we don't scold the wolves for their evil behavior. They're wolves. If we're simply animals who have a higher level of consciousness, should we be condemned for allowing our primal instincts to guide us? Vincent says no. Be a wolf or get devoured by them. This belief enables him to act without regard for people's lives. It's a liberation in a sense. Some would say it's a bad form of liberation, but in the world of animals, good and bad is just a matter of perspective. Hypothetically, if Vincent kills Max and Annie at the end of the film and makes his money, ends up living a comfortable life until his final day, who's going to judge him? When he's dead, he's dead. He'll be forgotten like everyone else, but at least he got to enjoy himself. Unfortunately for Vincent, Max does kill him at the end of the film because he's undone by his own belief system. Vincent only sees two options, a wolf and a sheep. He doesn't see the third option, which is being a sheepdog. He doesn't understand why Max would risk his own life 
to save Annie. Max could have been taken in by the police and put into protection, and he's ready to go that route until he sees that the final target is Annie. He knows from his brief interaction with her that she's a kind, honest, hardworking woman, the type of person that deserves to be protected. Vincent just sees her as a number. Max's decision reflects a moral system that was not easy to conceive. I don't typically like involving religion in my videos for numerous reasons, but just from a historical perspective, if you ever wonder how Christianity became the dominant religion on planet Earth, consider that the central idea is that the powerful should help the powerless. Again, I'm just going from a story perspective here. But being the son of God, Jesus would be the most powerful being ever to step on Earth, but instead of using that power to rebel against the Romans or start his own empire, he was the son of a couple peasants and was essentially just a hippie who got crucified, to quote Sam Harris. Hypothetically, he had the power to be the biggest wolf the world had ever seen, yet that was not the route he took. Just the story of his decision would end up altering the world forever, and for good reason. You don't see lions defending baby Impala from leopards, and you don't see a true nihilist like Vincent spare the people who are a barrier to his personal benefit, no matter how virtuous they may be. From my view, and I think from Michael Mann's view as well, Vincent's philosophy is quite ugly, and I suspect the reaction we get from Vincent as he sees coyotes run across the street, is Vincent having a moment of clarity, recognizing that he is much more than those coyotes, so why isn't he acting differently from them? The philosophical questions raised in Collateral are not easy to discuss, they are questions that have been debated for hundreds if not thousands of years, and they're going to be debated until the end of time. If you have any special interest in the topic, I recommend reading maybe Shakespeare's greatest play, King Lear. It deals with a lot of the same questions as Collateral, and it's filled with animalistic imagery and features maybe the most evil characters ever written by Shakespeare outside of Iago. Definitely worth the read if you have time to sort through the language, which is just astonishing at times. Thank you for watching. If you reached the end, I appreciate your time. Let me know if there are any other films you'd like me to give my take on. With Better Call Saul over, I'll probably just be doing one video a week on Friday night, unless another idea is provided to me. Have a great rest of your day, and hopefully, I will talk to you soon. Have a good one.